Towards the end of the 20th century, the Russian Navy was starting to look for a successor to the tried and tested Kilo class submarines, which were widely considered to be one of the quietest submarines in existence. Thus, the Project 677 Lada was conceived, which aimed to create a new series of diesel submarines, the Lada class, which is intended to surpass the Kilo in every conceivable way. The Admiralty Shipyard in St. Petersburg is the main builder of the Lada class. The lead boat, the St. Petersburg, was launched in 2004 and has been used primarily as a testbed for new technology that will be incorporated into future Lada class boats. So after approximately 20 years of development, it is time to do an assessment of the Project 677 Lada. In this video, we answer the question, is the Lada class a worthy successor to the Kilo class submarines? Before we continue, if you're interested in modern warships, submarines, and naval aviation, especially from Russia and China, please do subscribe to my channel. The original intention of the Russian Navy is to design a diesel boat that can do the job of the improved Kilo and do it significantly better. The new submarine needs to be smaller and even more silent than the Kilo in order to operate covertly in the shallow waters of the Baltic Sea. Preferably, the submarine should have air independent power so that it can stay submerged for even longer. The air independent power was envisaged to be the liquid oxygen and hydrogen variety, which makes use of fuel cells, because the Russians considered this to be quieter than the alternative, the Stirlin engine. The Lada should also have a better sonar suite than the Kilo, which will allow it to hunt down the fourth generation nuclear powered submarines of the US Navy, for example, the Virginia class. So how exactly did actual development match up to expectations? I'll just say right off the bat that the development of the Lada encountered many difficulties and had been delayed because the initial design did not meet the requirements of the Russian Navy. That said, the most recent design has met much of the expectations, especially around the sonar and the stealth requirements, which I will get into later. During sea trials and testing, the Russian Navy had identified a lot of deficiencies with the lead boat, the St. Petersburg especially around its diesel power plants and weapon systems. As a result, the construction of the other two boats was frozen in November 2011. After a substantial redesign, construction was allowed to continue in early 2013. The two boats under construction had to undergo major design changes and basically had to be rebuilt. Needless to say, this caused major delays in the construction schedule. The St. Petersburg itself will not be rebuilt, but will be modernized substantially. The original plan to install air-independent power into the Lada class has basically been abandoned. In December 2019, Alexander Buzakov, the boss of the Admiralty Shipyard, said in an interview that the two Lada class boats under construction will not be equipped with air independent power. It is not clear what the reasons are. The Lada class has reportedly faced a lot of funding pressures as the Russian Navy is focused on building its Yasin class nuclear attack submarines and also the Admiral Gorshkov class frigates. So the development of hydrogen fuel cell AIP may have simply ran out of funding. Alternatively, they may have run into technical difficulties around how to store the highly flammable hydrogen fuel in a safe way. Either way, no AIP for the Lada class, at least not the two boats under construction currently. The Russian Navy 
has one boat in commission, the St. Petersburg. The second boat, the Kronstadt, has been launched in 2018, after 13 years since its keel was first laid in 2005. Obviously, the redesign of the boat had led to a major delay. It is expected to be commissioned in 2022. The third boat is currently under construction and is expected to enter service in 2023. The Russian Navy has ordered three more of the Lada, which are expected to be commissioned over the next five years, at least according to the official schedule. In total, Russia is expected to field six Lada submarines by 2027. Because of the delays to the Lada project, the Russian Navy has ordered additional improved Kilo-class boats as an interim solution. So is the Project 677 Lada a failure? Well, I personally don't think so. There are a lot of uncertainty around the features that will be installed on the second and the third boats, but media reports do confirm many key improvements from the Kilo-class. For one, the sonar system on the Lada appears to be a major upgrade. The sonar is called the Lira, which is a bow-mounted sonar that can detect low noise targets at long ranges. The class is also reportedly fitted with flank sonar arrays and a tactical towed array sonar system. So it seems likely that the detection capability and detection range of the Lada will be a big step above the improved Kilo, especially in deeper waters out in the open ocean. Russian media has reported in the early 2010s that the St. Petersburg submarine managed to detect an American fourth generation nuclear powered submarine. The original design specification is for a submarine that's produced only half of the noise level of the Kilo. While it isn't clear whether the Lada have achieved this expectation, it is almost certainly quieter and stealthier than the improved Kilo. The Lada has a very low acoustic signature due to a special anti-sonar coating called Monia, which means lightning. The class also reportedly has an improved version of the seven-bladed propeller, which produces a lower level of noise and cavitation. The Lada also reportedly have active anti-torpedo defense systems. The specifics are not publicly available, but it might consist of underwater countermeasure systems for launching acoustic decoys. This will further increase its survivability, even if detected. The other notable improvement from the Kilo is a much greater degree of automation. The total complement of the Lada is just 35 officers and crew, down from the 52 on the improved Kilo. This is made possible by a more advanced combat system on the Lada called Lithium, which enables the automation of various control and technical duties. This helps to save on labor cost and may reduce the risk of human error. So in conclusion, it is not accurate to describe the Project 677 Lada as a failure, like some of the Western defense analysts have done. True, the Lada has not met all of the initial requirements set out by the Russian Navy, including air independent power. However, the Lada is still a significant improvement to the improved Kilo, and corrects many of the latter's weaknesses. The Lada has a much better suite of sonars, is stealthier, and has more advanced combat systems. So, in my opinion, the Project 677 Lada is a valid successor to the Project 636 Kilo. The Russian Navy clearly agrees to some extent, or they wouldn't have ordered six Lada-class boats 
given the limitations in funding and shipyard capacity. To finish, here are some of the basic parameters of the LADA class. Just beware that these are tentative, because most of the class has not been completed as of yet. They are expected to displace 2,700 tons submerged at full load, which is smaller than the kilo. This reflects the fact that the LADA is actually a single hull design, which breaks from the long-established Russian convention of double-hulled submarines. The length is 72 meters, which is similar to the kilo, and indeed, from the outside, the two classes of submarines look very similar. The underwater speed is 21 knots, which is slightly faster than the kilo, although the surface speed is quite slow at just 10 knots. The operational range is 13,800 kilometers on paper, although without AIP, it would be vulnerable to detection when it has to snorkel. So in practice, the LADA will probably operate close to friendly bases. Like the Kilo, the LADA can only operate at a maximum depth of 300 meters, which is fairly shallow for a modern submarine. For armament, the LADA class has six 533mm heavyweight torpedo tubes, which can also fire the caliber supersonic cruise missile for anti-shipping or land attack purposes. The LADA is reportedly able to use the most advanced torpedo in Russian service, the Physic torpedo. This is a deep water homing torpedo with a top speed of over 60 knots and a long range of over 60 kilometers. These performance indicators exceed the submarine torpedoes used by NATO. The Physic torpedo uses multiple systems for guidance, including active and passive sonar homing, wake homing, and wire guidance. The LADA should still be able to use the older Russian torpedoes if needed, like the Type 5365. The submarine carries a maximum of 18 torpedoes or cruise missiles.